All right, so a couple minutes later and we've got us a nice little rapeseed and clover salad. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Friday, March 8th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, I'm gonna show you how we're getting this plot behind me here, ready to plant watermelons in another month or so, a little process we call chicken teal. Then we're gonna head on over to the raised bed plot where we have another cover crop going and show you how to terminate a cover crop in a raised bed and get that ready to plant. So this is one of our no-till plots and this is going to be our watermelon plot in another month or so but as you can see we're a long ways from it being ready to plant so this is a cool season cover crop concoction we made and planted back during the dead middle of winter and that's why it never really filled in that great as you can see we got some bare spots right here we've also got some spots where it's filled in really good got some rape seed in here those are those leaves you see right there. Got some clover in here as well. A little bit of vetch down there too. So this never really filled in and got as thick as I would have liked, but it was better than having nothing here. And we do have enough vegetation there to keep our girls happy. So the girls have already made one round on this plot here, moving the chicken tractor every single day. With that first round, we're just letting them eat, saving money on chicken food, getting some added fertilizer to the plot. But on this second round, we're a little more focused on termination and getting this ready to plant watermelons. So this little spot right here gives you an idea of the damage they can do after just one day of grazing. This is the spot they were on before we cycled them back around to that side of the plot. You can also see here just how quick this stuff grows back. If we go back a few days before that spot over here, it's already starting to grow back and soon it will look like that there. Now for the second round of grazing, because we're focused more on termination, we're actually doing a two day sit with the girls. So they sit on each spot for two days as opposed to one day. They scratch up the soil even more and help terminate that cover crop. So they got put on this spot yesterday and I don't know if you can see through the wire there, but they eat most of the vegetation in the first day, but they don't scratch it up a whole lot. So the second day is when we really want to get them to scratch around and help the termination process. So for their second day on a given spot, what I like to do is take a, just a little <laughs> bit of layer pellets here. They know it's coming. And watch out, get back in there. And I just like to sprinkle them on the ground here, all over this spot. I just kind of throw those pellets all around there. And as they eat them pellets, they'll scratch up that soil, and really help terminate that cover crop. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, that's mighty cruel considering the fact you do have a chicken feeder inside that tractor. But keep in mind, these aren't pet chickens, these are working chickens. So we want them to work, we want them to scratch up that soil as much as possible, help terminate that cover crop. If we don't have them on a garden plot and they're in the yard and we're feeding them layer pellets, we do put it in the feeder. But for this purpose of terminating the cover crop, we want to encourage as much scratching as possible. Now as the girls turn the corner down there and finish up with this lane, what I'll do is take the wheel hoe and lightly cultivate this to kind of help finish out that cover crop. And as they bump along this plot, we'll keep wheel hoeing it, make sure that vegetation is nice and terminated before we're ready to plant. And that whole process of getting this plot ready kind of lane by lane actually coincides very well with my watermelon planting plan so what i've done in the last few years is not plant the entire plot of watermelon plants at one time i kind of stage the plantings that way we get a longer harvest window from our watermelons so whenever our watermelon transplants are ready and hopefully we'll get those seeds started on the next video i'll plant about two rows here in this plot and then i'll leave the other plants in the tray some of them may get a little bit root bound but that's okay wait another week or so and then we'll plant two more rows and might wait another week or so and plant two more rows and it gives us a nice continual harvest of watermelon as opposed to kind of having the harvest shoved into a small window we can enjoy watermelons much longer throughout the summer that way 
So that's the plan of action in this in-ground plot. We've done this many times before. It always works well. It's not fast. It's not like just going and grabbing a tiller and chewing all this stuff up, but it does work very well and we usually have some really fertile soil afterwards. Now let's go on over to the raised bed garden where we have another cover crop we need to terminate. What are you doing, little bit? You got daddy's mail? Daddy. So in this tall raised bed here, we have a similar cover crop mix, although we went a little more rapeseed heavy with this mix, as opposed to going a little more clover heavy with that in-ground mix. This stuff is filled in really, really well. Can't see a speck of soil down there, and that rapeseed's starting to get pretty dang tall. Now I know people like to get all funny about canola. This is not GMO canola. This is rapeseed. This is the OG canola. And if you've never tried this stuff, it's actually pretty tasty. Now this here's got some pine pollen on it, so it might not taste as good as it normally does. But it's really not that bitter. I almost tastes a little bit sweet. It's like a mustard grain. You can eat this stuff, grow it as a cover crop. You can feed animals with it. You can also feed yourself with it though. Pretty dang tasty little grain here. Now I have wondered in the last week or so, could I put one of my hens up here in this raised bed? Would they stay there and just eat all this and then go somewhere else? I'm not so sure they'd be so safe up in this raised bed here a hawk would probably get them so instead of using the chickens to terminate this like we do in the in-ground plots we got to go a little bit of a different route so the first step is to chop now we could use a weed eater for this but the weed eater might sling this vegetation all over the place ideally we want to drop it in the bed here weed eater also might skin up our raised beds a little bit and it'd be hard to pick up a weed eater this high and do a good job so we're going to go the manual route get a little edward scissor hands action on this cover crop i'm just going to come in here and just start chopping and dropping this stuff till we get it all cut down close to soil level all right so a couple minutes later and we've got us a nice little rapeseed and clover salad on top of this bed now we could just leave this here right like it is provide some natural mulch for this bed wouldn't be anything wrong with doing that but because we've got so much rapeseed here and because we know about the biofumigation benefits of this stuff i want to incorporate it into the soil and if you ever have any issues with nematodes in your raised beds i would highly recommend you incorporating it as well i haven't had any nematode issues in these beds so far but this right here will go a long way to ensuring we don't so step one was chop and then step two for us at least is going to be flip so just going to stick our shovel down in there and we may not be able to cover all this vegetation with soil we're going to flip as much of it as we can into that soil there get all those good biofumigation benefits and also help terminate this cover crop so this is what it looks like after a good flipping you can see we weren't able to dig deep enough to cover all this vegetation but we did cover a good bit of it now in this particular bed i've got several inches to work with here so what i'm going to do is now cover it even more with some soil let's assume your raised bed was topped off as much as it could be and you didn't have any room to add any more soil you could use a tarp to cover it we're going to use soil and the goal here and this third step is just to keep this stuff from growing back we've chopped it up pretty good we might only have a few sprigs that try to grow back but covering it with more soil is definitely going to help now i normally use bag mushroom compost for this covering step and that always works really well but i don't have any of that at the moment so let me show you what we are going to use so this is some stuff I get locally in bulk over there in the big city of Cairo, Georgia. They call this bed mix. It's pretty fine stuff. This is actually what we use to step up our fig trees. It's got some pine bark in it, some sand, some mushroom compost. I can't remember all what's in it, but it's good stuff. And since I have it on hand, I think we'll use it to top off this bed. So the goal here is to cover up all this green stuff so all we see is soil. So just going to start adding here Just start topping off this bed this all will settle down eventually but we're going to put enough on here where we don't see any more green 
and there we go mission accomplished we got all that greenery covered up now from my experiences you will get a couple sprigs that somehow come back alive and make it through we just pull those or flip those not a big deal this will terminate the majority of what we just flipped now another thing that we could have done which we've demonstrated in the past when flipping some of these other beds we could have went to our little worm farm underneath the pecan tree over there got some worm castings worms added those as well to kind of help with the breakdown of the vegetation but i just wanted to show you kind of a different way to do it here and just how simple it is to terminate a cover crop in a raised bed all you got to do is chop flip and cover so I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the different ways we get our garden ready for spring planting. As always, you can find a lot of the fertilizers and other products we use around here, including these raised beds, on our website at lazydogfarm.com. And if you're wondering why you should maybe try cover crop in a raised bed, watch this video right here when we planted this cover crop and talked about all the benefits that could be had for cover crops in raised beds. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.